ABC Listen. Podcasts, radio, news, music and more. It all starts with a bizarre customer service experience. We started to have problems. As outrage ripples across YouTube, an army of vigilantes is spurred into action. The one thing you cannot do is try to get somebody's video taken down. But the stakes are higher than anyone anticipates. Soon reputations will crumble as the feud takes on a life of its own. Beef. Hear the final showdown now on Background Briefing, free on the ABC Listen app. Our hunger for electricity has never been so great. Hardly surprising given the growing desire to go electric at home and with EVs on our roads. But it's the massive computer data centres that could become a big problem. Today, energy reporter Dan Mercer on whether we actually have enough electricity to keep up with the huge demand. I'm Sam Hawley on Gadigal Land in Sydney. This is ABC News Daily. Dan, right now we're using a lot of electricity and we're going to have a look at how we actually got here. But it's good to start back in 2008 because a really interesting thing was happening back then. We were actually starting to use a lot less. Yeah, it was quite a break from what up until then had been a fairly solid rule. For as long as anyone could remember really, electricity demand had always risen in line with our economy and our population. But then as you say, uh, you know, that link in 2008 was broken. You know, we started seeing for the first time demand actually decouple from economic growth. And in fact, it started to fall. There are a few reasons for this, Sam. Mm -hmm. A big one was the increasing efficiency of our energy appliances. In other words, our appliances were using a lot less juice to do the same thing. And a prime example of this, I'd say, is with air conditioners. They used to be terribly inefficient things. These days, air conditioners, they're just much more efficient. They can heat and cool our homes using much less power. And that's despite the fact that more and more of us might have more than one air conditioning system in our home. Another one of these drivers was the price of power, Sam. As you know, prices have been going through the roof for a long time. And so people just naturally are going to use less of the stuff, supply and demand and all that. A third factor is probably sad to say, the loss of some industry in Australia. There have been some big energy users which have closed their doors in the past 15 years or so as Australia's industrial and manufacturing base has withered somewhat. So around 2008, we started to use a lot less electricity for all those reasons that you have outlined. But now, Dan, that has completely turned around. We are so hungry for electricity again. Yeah, it seems we are. What's kind of interesting, Sam, is that measuring our demand for power isn't as easy as it used to be. In the past, you know, back in 2008, for example, it was simple. Big generators like coal plants made the electricity and everyone at the end of the line, like householders and businesses, used it. In other words, they took their power from the grid. But it's not quite that simple anymore because so many of us, householders and businesses alike, have rooftop solar and therefore meet our own demand. So on the old measure of demand for power from the grid, you get one picture, which is that consumption has never really recovered. You know, But if you look at the underlying picture, so if you take into account the demand that's being met by rooftop solar as well, you get a quite startlingly different picture. And that picture shows that demand is not only increasing again, but it's risen to new highs. It's eclipsed that record that was set all the way back in 2008. Average underlying demand hit almost 26,000 megawatts last July. That's a few hundred megawatts higher than the previous record. And all the indications are that record is going to continue to be broken from now on. Mm, All right. Well, Dan, let's have a look then 
at what is driving this renewed reliance on electricity. Let's delve a bit deeper into that. Obviously, as a nation, we have been trying to electrify, right? So I assume that's part of the problem. It definitely is. And and by all accounts, electrification is going to be a massive source of growth in electricity demand for a very long time. I mean, all you have to do is look at the things we're trying to electrify Mm. to get a sense of the scale of the task at hand. Everything from the way we cook our meals to the way we get around to the industrial processes we use to make stuff. It's all supposedly going to be electrified in the next few decades. And it's all going to require a lot of extra power. Currently, we tend to use fossil fuels like natural gas and oil to provide the energy those things need. But what we want to do instead is use electricity and clean electricity to boot. Is it really just products like cooktops and EVs that are causing this? Can it just be those things? Well, no. Um, They're certainly going to account for a lot of it, Mm. uh, EVs and, and the electrification of homes. But you know, right now, those things are having only a very marginal effect. You know, EVs, for example, they only account for one in 10 new car sales in Australia. And, you know, they only make up a tiny proportion of the overall fleet. Having said that, they are you know, increasing demand for power because they don't use oil, they use electricity. I suppose, you know, more broadly, there's just things like population growth and the sheer number of appliances we're using these days, Sam. Now, Australia is a growing country uh, or a country with a growing economy and it's a rich country and we have lots of devices and appliances in our homes which all need power, you know, even if they are more efficient than they used to be. Mm. Looming over all of this, though, is a bit of a sleeper issue and that's our demand for data or perhaps more accurately, our insatiable need for data. <laughs> I mean, yes. it's fueling a quite extraordinary amount of growth in you know, the data centres that are needed to house it. Yeah, right. We love everything being online, right? But these data centres, this is where they store, I guess, the computer systems that generate all of these things we want to know. They use a heap of energy. That's right. There's this analogy that, you know, a modern smartphone has processing power that's like 100,000 times greater than the computers that we use to get man on the moon probably a butchered metaphor by me, but the point is computers and devices, they've evolved to this remarkable extent and they are able to process this staggering amount of data. And of course, you know, we have the rise of artificial intelligence that's going on right now to a very marked extent. You know, that's another thing entirely. Yeah. I, you know, I spoke to Matt Rennie, who co-owns and runs uh, an energy advisory firm called Rennie Partners. You know, He said that in a world where AI becomes pervasive, there's likely to be a step change in demand for power and it will require around-the-clock supply. But we also know that coal's coming out of the system, that that renewables are taking a little longer than than what we thought they would. Uh, Transmission is is now three and a half years behind schedule on average. And the the overblown role of, of batteries and solar in the forecasts suggests to us that there will already be a gap between demand and supply which is something that we're worried about. Adding more demand through data centres just takes that to a different level. Mm. So, Dan, do we have a sense already about how much power these data centres actually use and how many of these things do we actually have in Australia at the moment? I was quite surprised when I found this out, Sam. We already have about 200 data centres in Australia. Between them, they use about 5% of the power drawn from the grids in which they operate. So over east and in Western Australia, you know, much of that power is used to cool computer chips, which are housed in the servers that make up the data centres. We got a tour of one of these centres in Port Melbourne uh, recently, which is operated by a company called Interactive. The CEO, Alex Coates, showed us around, but you know, it was quite hard to hear uh, because of the, the sound that the air conditioners made. Mm. They were blasting this place you know, to keep the servers cool. The current 200 data centres that I referenced uh, use about 5% of the power from the main grid at the moment. And so this notion... In her words, there's this perfect storm that's driving demand for data centres and the services they provide. 
Since COVID-19, we have seen this radical digitization of citizen experiences. And then if you consider artificial intelligence or AI, which is accelerating at a pace that's now greater than the internet itself was. Sam, significant efforts are being made to make cooling more efficient. It, it really should be noted. Interactive, for example, is exploring two different types of temperature control known as liquid to chip and immersion. Uh, and you know the idea is that they'll cut its electricity use. But ultimately, data centres will need to find new sources of power from somewhere. The level of technological advancement is so quick that we are going to have to work really hard to get ahead of the wave. And Dan, we are certainly not the only nation that is struggling with the amount of electricity these centres are using. The US has a really big problem on its hands, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. In some states like Virginia, which is, of course, close to Washington, it's, you know, the heart of government. And so it's just a really important place to have uh, lots of information services. The amount of electricity data centres are sucking from the grid is something like 20, 25 percent of supply. And there were warnings about the danger of shortfalls in electricity in, in some places in America before the end of the decade. Daniel Jurgen is arguably the world's most celebrated energy writer, and he noted in an essay earlier this year that data centres alone could consume as much as 10% of power in the entire US by 2030. So you take data centres, you take EVs, you take reshoring of manufacturing, and suddenly we've had 25 years of very slow growth in electricity demand because it grew until the mid 19 until the middle of the 1990s and then kind of flattened out and now that sharp growth is there and i think that's really changing the landscape suddenly the big tech companies are big players in the future of energy because they're the ones who are worried about reliable 24-hour electricity and so he he said one large tech company is opening a new data center every three days over yeah. there and that means that the goal of achieving you know, zero carbon electricity in, in the United States by 2035 is just going to be more challenging than it appeared during what he described as the slack years, COVID shutdowns. It will mean that the retirements of coal plants will be slowed down in the United States, it's highly likely, because reliability is the most important thing in terms of electricity supply. Dan, do we know that our forecasts about the demand from these data centres is really up to date? Because, of course, more and more of them are being built, right? Yeah, they are. And it's a great question, Sam, one that's getting a lot more scrutiny these days. Matt Rennie reckons demand from data centres is already sneaking up on the assumptions used by AEMO to forecast electricity requirements. And to illustrate his point, he compared AEMO's official forecasts with what industry was telling his firm. So, you know, this is the electricity companies, the utilities that'll have to provide the extra power, as well as the data centres that'll need it. He notes AEMO's forecasts show there'll be up to 1.5 gigawatts of new demand by 2035 in, quote unquote, an accelerated data centre scenario. AEMO has an accelerated data centre scenario, which has something like 1.5 gigawatts of data centre demand by 2035. Um, our research shows that that's something like 4.9 gigawatts. So, you know, two, three times what AEMO was forecasting. Well, Dan, it seems like we're going to need a lot more energy and pretty soon. Is it actually possible that we could run out of electricity? I doubt it, Sam. I mean, okay. probably not. I mean, apart from in the most extreme circumstances, which is you know currently the case anyway, right, in the height of summer or whatever, Australia's electricity system, it is engineered to prevent the loss of power at almost all costs. We have an extraordinary amount of slack capacity that's built into the system to avoid just that risk. And certainly AEMO and everybody else responsible for keeping the lights on, you know, they're acutely aware of the risks and they're working extremely hard to make sure there's always more than enough supply to meet demand. And, you know, they're keeping a very close eye on data centre demand. When you sum up everything we've discussed, it's all going to need more power and in you know, the case of data centres, perhaps a lot more power and on a much quicker timeline than we've been anticipating. And I think where this lands is that we were already under pressure to meet our climate and energy targets by 2030, by 2035 and so on. And you'd have to say 
our need for data is not going to make it easier. Dan Mercer is the ABC's energy reporter. This episode was produced by Sydney Peed. Audio production by Sam Dunn. Our supervising producer is David Cody. I'm Sam Hawley. Thanks for listening.